Teaching science in kindergarten through fifth grade can be a very rewarding experience because children in these grades get very excited about scientific topics. What better way to add the excitement and engage your students than by adding elements of technology to your science lessons? So what types of technology will you integrate into your classroom? The options seem so endless that the choice may be a bit daunting. A good way to approach your options is by looking at them as hardware, software, and the Internet. Once you break it down into these categories, choosing which technologies to use won't seem like such a big task. You probably already use some hardware in your classroom. Televisions, DVD players, and VCRs are all examples of hardware. There are a number of excellent science-based videos and DVDs available for the classroom. For example, you could show the Blue Planet series when teaching about the world seas. Series such as Bill Nye the Science Guy or Way Cool could be used to answer your students' natural curiosity about rocks, space, the human body, or the environment, just to name a few. Since you know that your students enjoy watching videos and DVDs, why not have them create one of their own? Students can create their own science video by using a video camera and a little imagination. You could assign students a task, such as a field study of the planet or animal life on school grounds, and take some video while they do it. Assign groups to different areas of the grounds, and then when you play the video for the class, they will get to see the results of each group. Another way to incorporate hardware into your teaching is by using a digital camera. Children love to take pictures. Why not allow them to photograph their experiments in the classroom or at home and then present their findings? For example, when teaching about plants, have your students grow seeds in the classroom. Allow them to take digital pictures daily or weekly to document the growth. Most classrooms have chalkboards or whiteboards, but not all have electronic whiteboards. Electronic whiteboards allow you or your students the flexibility of drawing on a chalkboard with the memory capabilities of a computer. This tool makes it easy for students to draw graphs or charts that would be difficult for them to create on a computer, but unlike a chalkboard drawing, the results can be saved. As a teaching tool, electronic whiteboards allow teachers to navigate the World Wide Web and open files with the touch of a finger, and all the while, you can display the action for your students. You could even use a site like UnitedStreaming.com to show digital videos on your electronic whiteboard. We've looked at several different types of hardware that can be used in the classroom. Let's take a moment to review. There are many ways that software can be used to help you with your teaching. With word processor applications such as Microsoft Office Word, you can create assignments, rubrics, and handouts. Spreadsheet applications such as Microsoft Office Excel can help you with grading. And electronic presentation software such as Microsoft Office PowerPoint can be used to create engaging presentations. Programs like HyperStudio can be used to create your own educational activities for your students. This software provides lesson plans, project ideas, and assessment tools. You can even use it to create your own CD-ROMs and websites. Some versions also include lab software. But teachers aren't the only ones who can benefit from software in the classroom. Even the students in K-5 through classrooms can use software. Older students can use a word processor to write reports and document science projects. With a little help, they can also incorporate graphs using an electronic spreadsheet application. There are many ways to make learning new software fun. For example, students could make paper airplanes and test them to see how well they fly with and without added variables such as paper clips and wing flaps. They could record and graph the results using a spreadsheet program. Another way to make learning new software fun is by asking students to create games using PowerPoint or another presentation program. Students can work in groups to create questions based on current lesson content. If desired, you can set up a template in advance so that students simply enter the questions and answers. Playing the games in class provides fun reinforcement of the concepts you're teaching. We've looked at some different types of software that you and your students might use. Now take a moment to think of some other ways you can use this type of technology in the classroom.
chances are good that your students are already very familiar with playing computer games. Making science-related computer games available in your classroom is a great way to use a student's love of gaming to your advantage. There are games available on CDs for learning the food pyramid, looking at the skeletal system, learning about dinosaurs, exploring the solar system, and playing science concentration. In addition to games on CDs or on your computer, there are plenty of games available on the Internet. You might be concerned about allowing students to use the Internet in your classroom, but with the proper preparation and monitoring, it can be a wonderful resource. Like games on CDs, online games offer the same interactivity that children love. They'll have so much fun, they won't even realize how much they're learning. Do you ever feel stuck when planning your lesson for the day? The Internet can be a great tool for overcoming this type of planning obstacle. There are websites that offer features such as Today in Science History, the Science Experiment of the Week, the Astronomy Picture of the Day, and the Science Question of the Week. By visiting these types of sites, you may get ideas for new lessons, or you might just decide to make it a part of your daily or weekly lesson. Another great online resource for the classroom is HowStuffWorks.com. Students can go on this site to learn about subjects ranging from how missiles work to how hybrid cars work. You could also incorporate this type of site into your assignments. Ask students to research how a certain object works and then have them present their findings to the class. You could even use it to freshen up your old lessons with new information. While you're thinking about websites that your class can use, why not look into online webcams? Live webcams allow you and your students to watch as events are occurring. For example, your class could have a shark's eye view, watch a volcano erupt, watch eggs hatch into chicks, look at the view of the North Pole, or see the Earth from space. What better way to excite students about a subject by showing them firsthand? If you're trying to come up with new technology lessons, but you get stuck when coming up with ideas, websites such as those listed can help you. Each of these sites offers ideas for incorporating technology into the classroom. With resources like these and many others, integrating technology into your classroom will be a snap. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in the classroom, either as a teaching tool or as an administrative aid.